Welcome to the Lindenwood Sports Network. I'm Neil Fisher. Joining the show is Lindenwood women's golf head coach, Abby Weber. Coach, how are you doing? Pretty good. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for joining us. Now, the team is doing very well this year, and what can you attribute the early success to? Uh, I think uh, the girls worked hard this summer, and so we came into the, to the fall semester uh, kind of hot off of our summer practice. Um, and they're just getting it done on the golf course. What kind of practice goes into the summer routines for the girls while they're not at school? Uh, they play in tournaments, a lot of uh, women amateur events um, and qualifiers, as well as just going to the, the golf course, uh, hitting the range and doing some short game work. Now, September 8th, you guys finished first out of 13 teams. Uh, what's the feeling like going into the new year and to finish first right off the bat? Uh, it's pretty exciting. That was probably the, the best uh, two-day tournament score that we've had um, as our first tournament uh, ever since I've been coaching So for a while. Um, and so it gives the girls a lot of confidence, especially um, now that we're kind of starting a three-tournament-in-a-row stretch over the next few weeks. Um, they have you know a lot of uh, confidence built up from those first uh, rounds that, they've, that they played. And does the confidence generally get started right when they win that first tournament or in that first tournament? Or does it build throughout the summer and then just slowly lead in? Because I know you guys start again in the spring. Uh, probably after finishing those first couple rounds at that first tournament, uh, knowing that, I mean, they know their ability. So actually being able to uh, put it um, all together for you know, a score that counts, and uh, it was a big tournament with all GLVC schools um, now that we've moved to conferences. So uh, like I said, it was a good confidence builder, and um, hopefully it will keep that momentum going into the next few weeks. And what's it like playing Washington University, like the hometown uh, city rivalry feel? Uh, you know, we've done this for the last two years now. Uh, they have a new coach, and so she had reached out to me for us to play um, just a one-day match on a Saturday. I'm, I think with their schedule, they're only allowed to play on Saturdays and Sundays. They're not supposed to miss school. Um, so it's nice for us because, you know, it's nice when we don't have to miss school either. And this year we played at our home golf course, Whitmore Country Club. Last year we played at uh, Tapawingo, which is a course that my girls weren't familiar with. And I uh, we think we shot 30 strokes better of course, we had the home course advantage, but uh, you know it's a it was a nice competitive event. They're they're ranked um, they're a top Division three school in the country. I think probably top five. <clears throat> so it was uh, it was also a good confidence builder being able to uh, pull out another good score. And the team beat them by five strokes. Uh, for somebody that doesn't really know golf and understand golf. Five strokes is almost like two points in basketball or like a run away in baseball. Mm. So what does it mean to be right down to the wire? Does the, do the people at the back end of the tournament know that they are the ones who need to shoot the best? Uh, you know, um, typically the girls have no idea where we are from a team score perspective. You know, they know how they're playing and they probably know who the, or how the girls and their groups are playing. Uh, even when we have live scoring, um, which is not all tournaments, but some, um, just the coaches kind of know. And I feel like that would be, uh, not all girls want to know that kind of pressure going into the last few holes. Some girls thrive off of it. You know, they kind of want to know where they're at. But, you know, I had no idea. I knew the team was playing um, decent, but I had no idea what, what we, where we were as a team um, until we finished. And I had no idea how washy it was until... I collected the scorecard. So, and you mentioned the home home field advantage, and how important is that in golf? Uh, it's a pretty big advantage, um, especially if you don't play a practice round. So, a lot of these courses <clears throat> you've never seen, and that can, you know, add five to ten strokes to a score with blind shots and not understanding how quick or slow the greens are. So, practice rounds are really important. Um, in these types of events, when you just play a one-day duel with someone, you know you're not you don't have a practice round. So um, they were kind of coming into the golf course cold, not really knowing it. Um, so 
you know, we play it almost every day, so we have a very <laughs> good understanding of how to play that golf course. So, um, so we definitely had an advantage probably. When the team doesn't have a practice round, what's your advice going into a, a new course cold? Do you uh, tell the ladies to lay up for difficult shots or to uh, just go for it? Uh, that's kind of hard. I guess it just depends on the, the golf course. Typically, it's more around the greens. So you just tell the girls to go for the center of the green um, and then hope that it, they're able to still make par or, you know, two putt from wherever they're at. But not seeing a golf course before you play it is, is very difficult. Um, and I would probably not recommend doing that unless, you know, unless you're playing just a one day event. Um, against a school not in the same division you know so from a ranking perspective um, it wasn't really going to hurt us much so uh, whether we played at Whitmore or we played somewhere else it wasn't probably going to matter. And what's going to matter is the University of Finley competition mm -hmm. you have coming up. Uh, what does it mean to be able to play such good competition early in the fall season? Well it's good for us from a, a ranking perspective um, Switching conferences led to us switching regions, and so we're you know having to change our our schedule entirely, um, and trying to just get head to heads against some of these schools, uh, because based on how you play against them, kind of goes into how you're selected at the end of the season. So we are playing good right now, so that's um, that's a positive going into to this next tournament. But there are, uh, there are a lot of uh, top. 10 schools that will be playing um, in this tournament. So hopefully we have a good run at it, and um, I guess that's just my girls show up to play, you know. Yeah, and the host, Finley, is ranked six in the latest uh, polls in Division II. Mm -hmm. um, so what's it like for the girls knowing that they get to go face this competition while they're not in the top 10? Uh, I guess, you know, we like being the underdogs, and so you you don't have as much pressure because if you play well great um, if we don't play good it's disappointing but we'll have other tournaments to try to um, to make up for it but like I said I'm confident with the way the girls are are playing right now and so even if we don't beat them just putting up a good team score is kind of what I'm more concerned about and putting up the team score, how do the teammates go about uh, doing it? Are they just trying to beat out each other while collecting a great team score, or are they uh, shooting for the low 70s to mid-70 number? Uh, you know, when the girls go out on the golf course, uh, the one thing I think we're all kind of on the same page with is it's them and the golf course. So it's uh, that individual person, and hopefully – their golf game shows up that day and they're able to make a few putts and then at the end of the day hopefully you know at least four girls were able to have a, a good day and then add those four scores up and that's our team score so it's 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 individual um, to an extent but I know they're excited for the potential that our team has this year and so they all want to contribute to that um, so I would say that uh, that they, um, even though it's individual, they are still concerned about how the team is doing. And you mentioned individuals. There's two individuals right now that are excelling, and that's Josefina Hopped and McKenna Montgomery. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about their game and the similarities and differences you see. Uh, well, McKenna is a, a new transfer student that we had um, this year. And she was coming to us from another Division II school where she had played on the golf team um, for two years. So that is something that when you bring in a freshman, they don't have the two years of experience already of playing uh, competitive golf at the college level. So, um, you know, she is able to kind of bring in the same type of leadership that uh, Josefina has. Um, Josefina has been a very solid player for me for the last three years and um, you know she works hard and um, on the golf course I mean she's working for every shot so they uh, they have different games McKenna gets a lot of birdies um, but she may also have some bogeys and whatnot 
um, so it's a little more up and down uh, and streaky. Um, and Josefina is going to have a lot more pars probably. Um, and then hopefully some birdies if she has a couple of um, mishaps on some holes. So for the most part, it's pretty exciting to have two players that are uh, able to generate such low scores for us. Um, and I think they're able to push each other in a sense. So it just uh, adds to that competitive level. So it's, it's a great thing for, for a coach um, to have um, if one has a bad day, the other one's there to kind of pick, pick them up. So. And in your 12th season, uh, you guys get to host the NCAA tournament this year at mm -hmm. St. Albans. So what does that mean to you and to the school uh, to be able to host it and, and showcase Lindenwood? Oh, it's, well, a lot of work. Um, running a golf tournament is a lot of work anyway. Um, a golf tournament of this magnitude is, you know, double, triple the work. Uh, luckily, St. Albans uh, Country Club has, has been tremendous with the amount of help that they have um, given us and, you know, being able to work with us uh, with a lot of things. And uh, I think it's a pretty unique and uh, special opportunity that the men and the women will be playing at the same facility. Um, we've never played at a, uh, in a tournament where you had the men on one side and the women on the other side since it's a 36-hole facility. We've played in tournaments where you have men and women that are kind of mixed together on the same golf course, but you know it, it definitely will feel, at least for the student athletes, like a true uh, festival um, and championship because they'll be able, you know, some men and women's programs from the same school will be able to participate, and I think that's just a pretty cool opportunity that not a lot of student athletes can say that they've experienced. And how does the preview work in the fall for the spring uh, come that time? So in, uh, in two weeks, so after, so the Monday, Tuesday after homecoming, uh, we're hosting a fall preview. So the men, I think, have uh, 18 teams and we have 15 teams and a lot of nationally ranked programs uh, within the Division II level. And uh, we'll be hosting, you know, the same time, type of format uh, for the girls to be able, and the boys, to be able to see uh, this golf course just to get some extra rounds in, just in case, you know, you were to qualify in the spring. Uh, St. Albans is a pretty tricky golf course, at least the one the women are playing. So getting to see it, the more times, the more rounds they're able to get in, uh, the more comfortable they would, they would be. Uh, so it, in my opinion, would be a slight advantage going into the national tournament. But uh, I, I think all the schools are excited to come. And it'll kind of be that, that same feel where you've got the men on one side and the women on the other. So uh, it's an exciting time for, for Lindenwood to, you know, be able to showcase um, such a nice facility um, and be able to host all those schools. And so you mentioned coming in cold. So these teams want to come to this preview because if they have the opportunity in the spring, mm -hmm. then they'll know the course a little bit, right? Yes. So... Uh, from the women's from the women's side, I think um, at least ten of the schools that are coming are probably in the top twenty in the country. Uh, from the men, I'm not I, don't, I can't really speak for the men's side, but I know uh, that Coach Schaub has a lot of competitive schools that are coming in as well. So those schools probably have a pretty good idea or indication that they will be qualifying um, for the national tournament. And this will give them kind of a little boost, in my opinion, prior to the, the national tournament. And so you guys, to end the fall season, you have the Bearcat duel at McKendree. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about the transfer into the GLVC and what it's going to mean for the future of Lindenwood Golf. Uh, you know, I was actually just talking to Coach Shaw the other day, and we were talking about how, um, how nice our travel schedule has been <laughs> this fall because uh, there are so many you know, local schools that are part of the GLVC. And, uh, you know, from a athletic department uh, standpoint, I think it was probably a, a good move financially um, for all the sports as far as traveling goes. We, uh, even though we had to change our entire schedule because we were very MIAA heavy coming into this fall, um, 
it's been kind of nice. I think there's uh, a set more of a sense of community. Uh, a lot of the um, other schools in the conference support each other's tournaments. So a lot of the tournaments that you go to are going to be full of GLVC schools, uh, whereas it was a little bit different in the MIAA. Um, everyone kind of played in their own tournaments, and then there was one tournament a, a season where it was kind of specific just for the MIAA. And for the MIAA and the GLVC, is there a different style of game or um, because I know that there's very competitive teams in the GLVC and very competitive teams in the MIAA. So does it almost transfer in nicely for you guys having played all those top teams in the MIAA? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if the GLVC expected us to probably be this competitive right off the bat. Um, and, you know, it's golf, so you never really know uh, what's going to show up that day. So. I'm really happy with the transition that we've made as a team and uh, so far, you know, the showing that we've, we've had and, you know, we've kind of made it known that we are competitive and um, hopefully we're able to give uh, some of the schools um, some competition come spring for conference. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it, we went from one competitive conference to another competitive conference. so. We just got to keep playing hard and see what happens. And what's one thing that you're looking forward to to get out of the team this fall? Uh, I mean, I, I would like a couple more wins, of course, any coach would. But as long as we stay within our ability from a team scoring perspective, I'm perfectly happy with that. So. All right. Well, thank you. That's all the time we have. Thanks to Coach Weber for joining us. Coming up, we'll talk to head football coach Jed Stugert on the Lindenwood Sports Network. I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. Welcome back to the Lindenwood Sports Network. The Lindenwood football team is currently 1-3, losing three games to non-conference opponents. Joining me now is Lindenwood football head coach Jed Stuger. Coach, how are you doing? Good, Neil. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Good. It's a beautiful day. Absolutely. Um, to start off the non-conference games, yeah. you get a chance to schedule some in your, in your first year going to the GLVC, and you've lost the three that, mm -hmm. that you've scheduled early. Um, what does it mean to play good opponents early, and especially non-conference? Well, you know, we, we knew taking on Eastern Washington was going to be a, a big task, and so you know we're three and one, we're two and or we're one uh, one and three, we're we're one and two in division uh, division schedule, and uh, it's very valuable. I think I think um, you know I just reminded our team and our team meeting this week, you know, kind of trying to get our our uh, confidence back a little bit that you know um, you know our non-conference uh, teams that we've played they have a combined record of their six and one um, you know and uh, and and um, you know and so the quality of opponents we've been playing is, is good that doesn't mean we're trying to justify the fact that we lost those games I'm trying to get them to understand that number one we're not playing Patsy teams because it doesn't help us for our future I think you know the strategy was number one is to to go play Eastern Washington to give those kids, our kids, that experience. But but the level of play, if we if we can try to match that kind of level, and then of course, you know, playing a playoff team in Midwestern State um, was another uh, reason why we took that. We, I want our kids to have the mindset that we're gonna, if we want to be a playoff team, if we want to compete for championships, we got to play at that level. Um, and then even uh, Davenport, you know, um, the the season turnaround. I think from they're, they're such an early young team. Going on the road nine hours and playing a you know playing a team like that um, again was another life le or a football lesson we learned uh, of, of if you don't play four quarters against teams like that you're not going to come out with wins so a lot of lot of things we've learned through this but I reminded him we're one and zero in conference play 
And, um, you know, right now our goal is we want to try to win a conference championship. And, and uh, if we do that, it kind of can mean that we st- our playoff hopes are still alive still, all those things. So there's nothing to panic over. we just got to learn these lessons. But we got to start uh, we got to start learning from them and having them transfer over. We're, I think we're done learning right now. Yeah, I could totally see you guys being 3-1 and one going into this yeah. week at McKendree because the teams you have played – are, are good and very good. But you guys have been right there along with them the entire time. Uh, granted, the Eastern Washington game against a Division One school, but you also scored 30 points on them, which is no. a, a hefty task if you ask anybody. Um, so the problem is is the little mistakes and the, the key mistakes and not playing those four quarters. So how in practice have you turned that around? Well, you know, we, we started putting our guys in situations in practice. We started competing more against each other and kind of having a, um, you know, part of that's uh, it creates a more energized practice, but it, it's that constant competing all the time. And so we were pre- going ones against ones a lot more of just competition settings. Um, you know, it's also challenging some of our guys. You know, this is the time of year where you're going to have some, some guys Guys banged up and maybe not playing and things like that in some key spots where you know we got to have other people step up and and challenge those guys. Um, so we you know we kind of do that in practice too to put them in situations where they give them confidence that you know when when somebody's not able to play or something that hey this is my opportunity to step up. And uh, to be honest with you, I think um, you know we took a, a, a lot different approach this week. Uh, we sat back and, and we listened as a coaching staff. Um, I think sometimes you know a team. Uh, you know, if it, coaches have a tendency to want to talk and preach all the time and say, hey, we need you to do this, we need you to do that. Uh, I see a team that cares, they, they're competing, they want to win so bad, they're coachable. We decided this, this week, you know, we, we sat and listened a little bit. We listened to the offense and, and, uh, from a team, we listened to the defense and let those guys have a voice of what they see uh, they need from us as a coaching staff. And, and we kind of feel like we, our word was humility as a team, you know, playing for each other and even for coaches to say, okay, you know, these are the things that we, we hear you and, and uh, um, and it was a very positive. It wasn't a complaining session. It was like, hey, coach, we, we see these things because um, we asked them and we wanted to hear. And I think it's transferred over to, you know, we've had two really good days of practice, um, maybe the best we've had all year. And I think just letting them kind of have a voice in this thing. Um, and, and we learned some things as a coaching staff from them that I think can transfer over. And that's phenomenal here because not every coaching staff does that. Not every oh, coaching no. staff yeah. looks at the player's perspective and gets that and then says, all right, this is what we need to do now to move forward. Because right now, you guys do need to move forward and take those four games that you've played and move on from them because they're in the past. Yeah. And what are you going to do about it? You're going to go to the future. And you have this opportunity this week to play McKendree for their homecoming game. So they're going to come out ready to play. Uh, what are you guys going to bring to the table this week? Well, confidence. You know, we just talked about confidence all, all week. I told them to quit worrying about the scoreboard and the end of the games. That, that if you know, our focus is let's play four good quarters of football and kind of let the chips fall where they may. If you if you play four solid quarters and stay focused and stay confident in in the, in the game, um, but for some reason we're losing. We lose some confidence when things uh, flip. I think it's not that we become afraid. I think we start to. Uh, I told the team. I said. I say. I, I said. Think sometimes I feel like we're. A, we become a team that hopes we win instead of believes we're going to win. Uh, we hope that the time runs out. We hope you know because we always start off with leads, and then we kind of we kind of get take our foot off the gas. And that, like I said, that's some of the things that us as a coaching staff. You start to protect your team. You don't even know that you're doing it instead of staying aggressive and doing the things that we are doing to get there. So we were a little stalemated there a little bit. We're trying to protect them because we're trying to figure out, and they want they say, hey, coach, trust us. Just let's put the foot on the gas. And and, uh, and I think it just, like I said, uh, our issues right now is just confidence on this team. You know, that uh, one-point loss, we, you know, a team we should have beat in Midwestern, if we win that game, probably we're not. We're talking probably about something totally different because we got to get one of those wins. But uh, we'll get there, and I think you know the focus now is on us, um, not really homecoming at McKendry or McKendry itself. We saw film on McKendry, but right now it's about uh, not beating ourselves. You know, let's go play our game and play four quarters and let it all kind of sort out where it where it ends up. And what's the feedback from the offense and the defense? Because both of them have shown tremendous signs of being at the top of their game every week. Uh, So what are you getting back from them? Well, I think this, you know, like I said this week and the communication that we've had, I I think it's been very, uh, the energy level of practice has been good all year, but I think it was extra special this week. I think they 
they they see the same things, and I think when they they thought maybe the meeting was going to be about you know us really attacking the things they're not doing, and I think when they they kind of heard that we wanted to hear from them, um, you know, because we all share the same frustrations. We all see how good we can be. It, we got to fix the little things, and um, you know, so a lot of really good feedback. I think you know, like I said, I uh, yeah, not everybody does that. I think some coaches feel that would create a a complaining uh, mindset. I, I just don't think it does. I think it empowers your team that they have a voice. And uh, we as coaches don't have all the answers either. You know, and um, you know, sometimes we may not even know what's going on unless you hear hear from your team. So I, I thought it was a, a good, productive week, and, and um, I think it can uh, it can be an answer to some of our confidence problems right now. And what's Cade Brister's mindset like right now as the quarterback? Because he had the fumble, mm -hmm. uh, and he's had a couple interceptions in the last game. Yeah. Uh, so going into this week against another GLBC opponent, the second one he's going to see uh, this season, what's what's he thinking? Yeah, he's his mind's good. I mean, I, I uh, Cade's a little bit like if you remember the press conference when Tim Tebow kind of walked out and and you know kind of said, hey, you know, you know, trust me on this. You know, Cade kind of had one of those moments this week. I think uh, he's the first one to fall on the sword and and take responsibility. He's an incredible leader, um, you know, and he doesn't have, you know, two of the fumbles this year, you know, it's uh, one was like Saturday was from behind, didn't see a guy coming from behind, and, and the kid just happened to hit the ball out. You know, he, it's like uh, those things happen in games, but he's very, uh, uh, he's been a great leader. He's, these kids trust him. They believe in him. And, uh, you know, sometimes in a game like last week when we were seeing this much pressure, you know, at the end of the game, you know, that was really a seven-point contest. You know, the the late interception is kind of desperation. You know, we're trying to make a play. And and, uh, and so, you know, but, uh, you know, so we look at those things in context to say, hey, you know, we're just, we got to get a first down. So he kind of throws the one up, hoping to get a call or, a pit, you know, get a catch. So, um, you know, he's making right decisions. And so from a younger stance, uh, the younger guys on the team right now have to step up because there's some injuries uh, at running back especially mm -hmm. because when you don't have the running game, Cades has to do all the running mostly and yeah. then he's got also got to open up the throwing game. Um, so what are you looking for out of your younger guys coming into this week? Well, you know, it's it's um, you know we saw um, our young guys, you know, against uh, William Jewell really stepped up, and you know Dalton had a good game and, and things. You know what I think a lot of it is is there's just some things that people do that you can't replace. I mean, Nice Sutherland brings a whole different uh, um, element to our offense uh, when he gets the ball in his hands. You know, sometimes you, you if you don't have that kind of electricity and speed, you just you got to work around that. I think. Uh, you know, not having him the last couple of weeks has been uh, tougher on our offense because there's some things that we can do to, uh, when the blood's in the water and pressure's coming, you know, uh, if, if Nash is in the backfield, um, you, you got to make sure you've got him covered. So, you know, when he's not in the backfield, it can, you know, some of our pressure valves and things, when you see a lot of pressure, um, you know, limits that a little bit. So, you know, yeah, you just got to put those kids in those situations. We're a very young team, and in a lot of those, the, the, some of these guys have only played their first or second college football game. So um, experience helps with that a little bit, too. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Coach. Oh, thanks, That's man. all the time we have. On behalf of Coach Weber and Coach Stugart, I'm Neil Fisher. Thanks for joining us on the Lindenwood Sports Network.